So singing that, still just rejoicing. We had uh, Christmas Eve had a man get saved. Keep praying for Noah. He just uh, came in off the street and and uh, anyway came for the service and and uh, got saved. And then uh, New Year's Eve uh, had another man just came in off the street, said he was burdened. Uh, he lives across the street, but uh, James and uh, keep praying for him uh, as well. But uh, came and and uh, raised his hand during the service and, and came forward and got saved. And I just thought what a blessing to see uh, the uh, the uh, end of the year. Uh, in that fashion, see God still working on hearts of people uh, and just hope to see that regularly this year, uh, seeing more and more people. I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon and uh, we, we need to be faithful in seeking uh, and uh, uh, going out and compelling men to come in. Our theme for this year, uh, into the highways and hedges, uh, into the highways and hedges and and uh, just be praying about that this year, that God would just use us uh, as a church. Uh, just in, in a greater way, being a light uh, to uh, those within uh, the area that they can see uh, the light of Bible Baptist Church. And and uh, praise the Lord for uh, for our missions and, and reaching the uttermost parts of the world. And and thankful it's exciting to have a part in missions uh, and uh, sending missionaries and praying for them and and encouraging them. Uh, but uh, God's called us also uh, to uh, reach right here in Coquille. And so uh, into the highways and hedges uh, this morning we're still in the book of first or book of john chapter one uh, so john chapter number one and uh, uh, looking at these uh, pictures presentations descriptions of the lord jesus christ here in john chapter number one and of course we began that jesus he is the word and if you could sum it all up in one word what would it be jesus he's the beginning and the end he's the alpha and the omega and uh, he's the source of everything uh, that uh, he is uh, the word, the declaration of God. No man has seen God at any time, uh, but uh, Jesus has uh, declared him. And, and so he is the word. He's the creator. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And, and we see that he is the creator. The Bible says that he is the life uh, and a source of all life. Not only our physical life, uh, but eternal life. Uh, but he is uh, life. And, and we looked at Jesus Christ is the light. John the Baptist was to bear witness of the light. But Jesus Christ is the light. And, and uh, we looked at that he is the light. And then we went on and looked at he is, he is full of grace. As we uh, just see uh, Jesus coming into this world. And, and the declaration of, uh, of him was, was given that he is full of of grace and uh, just uh, praise the Lord for the grace of God uh, through Christ you, you cannot exhaust the riches of Christ and we need to be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ and we looked at uh, last week uh, that he's full of truth he's full of truth there is no darkness at all he is full of truth and and uh, of course as we look at at uh, the truth and I, I praise the Lord for the word of God but even if we had the word of God, we wouldn't understand the word of God without the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ as our savior. And, and we understand the Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Uh, they are uh, spiritually discerned and we need uh, salvation through Christ to be able to see uh, the truth. Our eyes have been opened. We see differently than the world uh, around us. Well, uh, today I'd like to uh, to uh, look at, if you would, first John chapter number one as we uh, continue uh, through the passage and. And beginning in verse number 19, verse number 19, John chapter number one and verse number 19. The Bible says, and this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Remember, John the Baptist was out in the wilderness and he was preaching and and uh, those that would come and repent, he had baptized. And and uh, and so they uh, uh, all of a sudden, lots of people, he's getting a lot of response and people are coming unto him and and uh, so the bible says here the uh, the jews again uh, feeling that threatening from the uh, the priests the bible says that they uh, they uh, come and and uh, says here in in verse 20 and, and he confessed and denied not but confessed i am not the christ they were wanting to know are you the appointed one are you the chosen one are you the one that uh, god has sent <coughs> and they ask him what then art thou Elias? I mean, uh, the Bible closed the Old Testament with the promise of Elijah to come. 
And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And uh, he answered, no. Then said they unto him, who art thou? We may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And, and we looked at, that's what God wants us to be, is a, a voice uh, to announce the Savior. <coughs> John presents himself as the friend of the bridegroom, not the bridegroom. Verse 24, and they which were sent were the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou art not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latcheth I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. In verse 29, I love verse 29. Verse 29, the Bible says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me there cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore Am I come baptizing with water? And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, same that said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bare record that this is the Son of God. Then verse number 35. Again, the next day after, John stood and two of his disciples, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Good way to start a new year. Behold, the Lamb of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for uh, this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending your son into this world to uh, come and be born as a man and to uh, be raised and live without sin, the lamb without spot or blemish, to then to go and pay the price for our sins on the cross. And uh, Lord, I'm so thankful that you didn't stay in that grave, but three days later rose again and now at the right hand of your Father in heaven, uh, waiting for all to call upon you to be saved. Father, I pray that you would bless the message this morning. Give me the voice and the energy to preach it. And, Father, as we begin this new year, uh, we might uh, go out on the highways and hedges and uh, be a voice proclaiming, behold. That people might look and, and uh, gaze upon and understand and know the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God. Just thinking through uh, throughout Scripture what uh, God says about the Lamb. And as we look at uh, Jesus Christ, the Bible presents here in John chapter number 1, continuing that he is the Lamb. Not just a Lamb, but the Lamb. And uh, uh, not that specifically mentioned, but the first place you could probably find the Lamb in the Bible was back in the Garden of Eden. The Bible says there in Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 19 that God uh, there formed all the animals out of the ground and, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And in walks this white furry creature. I mean, a lamb is, is uh, you know, not, uh, I mean, it's a baby. Uh, it's a lamb. And, and this, this lamb walks in and, and cute, cuddly uh, type lamb. I mean, the wool and all that around these kind of picture and, and, uh, and to see what is Adam going to call this creature and uh, as he looks at that uh, that uh, lamb uh, you know lambs aren't very intimidating are they you ever been intimidated by a lamb now a ram that's different but uh, uh, a lamb I was thinking some goats are kind of intimidating aren't they but uh, uh, you know to, to think of a, a lamb uh, most of us would have no problem walking up and and uh, handling uh, and uh, I, I've never met anybody that has a lamb phobia maybe you have 
Never heard anybody that has a lamb phobia. And, and uh, uh, you know that, uh, I mean, just uh, see a lamb and start screaming and run the other way. But, uh, you know, that we think of this, this lamb comes in and, and, uh, and Adam calls it a lamb. I believe in Genesis chapter 3 when the Bible says God took coats of skins and clothed them. I believe it was a lamb that he killed. Uh, you say, uh, uh, where does that say it in the scripture? Well, it doesn't say that in the scripture, but it says he took coats of skins to clothe them. And, uh, uh, but I do believe it was a, a lamb. And, uh, uh, but uh, look at uh, Genesis chapter number 4. I just want to look at the lamb in scripture this morning. And, and uh, just as introduction, we have a, a, a long introduction, a short message. Uh, only six points today. But there'll be quick points, I promise. I just want to begin the year as we look at this year ahead. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Here in Genesis chapter number 4. The Bible says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. She again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. Now, where did Abel know to offer a lamb? Because he saw God or he knew God. He, he didn't see God, but he knew God. Offered a lamb, made coats of skins to clothe them. It's kind of amazing. You can look at here. The, the, the lamb is the oldest domesticated animal. It was the first. The Bible says the very first uh, domesticated animal it was a lamb. Uh, and uh, uh, here Abel, as he uh, goes into uh, to, uh, uh, raising sheep. And, and uh, of course, he's a, a sheep herder. And, and uh, as, as we find here, and when he comes to offer uh, this sacrifice, we, we see him come and bring uh, a lamb uh, to the offering. Uh, you can find throughout Scripture uh, speaking, and, and of course we know the lamb is presented as the clean uh, animal and uh, is uh, worthy of uh, being used for the sacrifice for uh, the covering of uh, their sins. But uh, next turn to Exodus chapter number 12. Exodus chapter number 12. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. One of those sons, Joseph, uh, sold into slavery into Egypt by his brothers. And while they're in Egypt, he becomes second to Pharaoh. And, and uh, during a time of, of great famine, God uses that to bring Jacob and his children down uh, to Egypt to live. And there in Goshen, they live and they prosper and uh, they multiply uh, to the point where Egypt fears them. And so the Pharaoh enslaves the Israelites. And they're just in a time of miserably, misery. They cry out to God. And, and God sends a deliverer. And Moses comes to free the people. And in order to, uh, to uh, uh, allow uh, Pharaoh to let the people go, he brings these plagues upon the nation. And, and uh, as they go through these plagues, the final pra plague uh, we uh, understand the Passover. Uh, God uh, tells, uh, tells uh, Moses that uh, in a night, the death angel is going to pass through the land and, and all the firstborn of all the men and of all the animals is going to die uh, that, uh, that night. And in order to protect uh, the Israelites and identify their homes and to protect their firstborn, Notice Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 3. Here in Exodus 12, 3, the Bible says, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house Take it according to the number of the souls, every man according to his eating, 
shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So I want you to take a lamb, lamb of the first year, lamb without spot or blemish. And I want you to kill that lamb. And I want you to take the blood and I want you to mark the two side posts of the door and, a, and, and the, the, the door post over the top there and, and with that, uh, that blood. And when the death angel comes through and he sees, that's going to be a token uh, for you. Uh, we find God instructing them to use a lamb. You know, God does all things decently in order. It's amazing the pictures you see in the Old Testament, and there's much we could uh, just uh, preach on there, the, uh, the different types and instructions and things that are given in regards to the Lamb. But uh, this morning, just behold the Lamb. Look at uh, Exodus chapter number 29. Exodus chapter number 29. That, that was the beginning of their years. They were to begin every year beholding the Lamb. Every year they began the year, the Passover, uh, the first of the Jewish years, uh, we know that, uh, you know, it doesn't January. Our, our year starts in January, but uh, their year would begin with Passover. And, and uh, they were to begin the year beholding the Lamb. Look at Exodus chapter 29. Moses gives them some instructions in the wilderness. Actually, God gives them some instructions uh, to Moses and to the people. Here in Exodus chapter number 29, and notice verse number 39. <coughs> Beginning of verse 38. It says, Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day. Back to those lambs. Uh, baby sheep. Lambs of the first year. The Bible says, now this is uh, that which shall offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year day by day continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning and the other lamb thou shalt offer at evening. With the one lamb and he goes on and gives the, the meat offering to give with uh, or the meal offering to give with the uh, with the lamb. But they were to begin every day offering a lamb. 365 days a year. And I understand in Israel's calendar, there was, what, 360. But uh, uh, 360 days a year, they were to, uh, to, to, to begin every single day offering a lamb. Behold the lamb. Every night before bed, uh, the nation of Israel there at the temple, they, uh, the tabernacle at this point and later becomes the temple, they were to offer up uh, a lamb of the first year without spot or blemish, uh, begin every day and end every day. Behold the lamb constantly presented this lamb before uh, Israel and and uh, and then you can just write this down but numbers chapter 28 God adds to this and he says on the Sabbath day you're to offer two lambs double it two lambs in the morning and two lambs in the evening uh, every uh, seventh day you're to uh, to uh, offer uh, double that and and again God constantly having Israel put for Israel behold the lamb. And then look at Isaiah chapter 53. 
Isaiah chapter 53. Different comments some have made when they come and ask him, Who art thou? And he saith, uh, You know, not the Christ. Well, are you Elias? No, I'm not Elias. What about that prophet? Uh, well, what prophet are they talking about? Well, many believe it's Isaiah. Again, has to do is he cries, Behold, the Lamb. Here in Isaiah chapter 53. Beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And we know the right arm of the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him, and was, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned every one to his own way and the lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Uh, satisfied By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah pictures, presents, behold, the Lamb. Jesus Christ is going to come as a Lamb. He's going to bear uh, our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace is going to be upon him. And the Father is going to see it and be pleased and accept it as an acceptable sacrifice for our sins. Behold the Lamb. Then look at Revelation chapter number 5. Revelation chapter number 5. Here in Revelation chapter number 5, we come to the last book of the Bible. I didn't look them all up myself, but read that there was there's 27 references in the book of Revelations to Jesus Christ being the lamb. Uh, 27 references and here in Revelation chapter five and going on in heaven as John is taken up into heaven to see this vision. And and of course, there's this book that is sealed uh, and uh, all of the, uh, the the plans of God and of course the. Uh, included in that the tribulation the millennial kingdom the judgment seat of christ the uh, new heavens new earth all of that is sealed up in a book and and uh, uh, as they bring that uh, that book testament uh, there the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, will uh, for the inheritance and as they bring that uh, before they uh, they look around and nobody can open that book uh, nobody can open that book no one is qualified no one is worthy and and uh, in fact, uh, John, he begins to cry and and uh, there's wailing and all going on because no one is able to 
Open that book. In Revelations 5 and verse 6. Or verse 5, it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And you just kind of picture John looking around here, and he says, Where's the lion? I, I, I don't see the lion. It's pretty easy to see a lion, isn't it? Pretty ferocious creature. Uh, it's, it's amazing the strength and the power of a lion. King of beasts. The lion, you don't want to face a lion, but he looks around. Where is this lion of the tribe of Judah? Verse 6, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. He's looking around for a lion, isn't he? But all of a sudden, he, he sees a lamb. The Bible says, a lamb as if it had been slain. You know, when Jesus Christ raised, he said, here, see my hands and see my side. And and uh, he told Thomas, he says, here, put your your fingers in the holes. He still got the holes in his hand. He still got the piercing from the sword in his side. And, and you know, when we see him in heaven. We're, we're still going to see the marks of the crucifixion upon him uh, as he went to the cross to die for us. It would be an eternal remembrance. We looked at in Sunday school this morning. Glory in the cross of our Lord jesus christ and and uh, as he's uh, there uh, you know uh, and and he looks around he sees a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns some say what's the seven horns well seven number of perfection horns are power and, and of course he has uh, all powers given unto him seven eyes eyes speaking of wisdom seven perfection the bible says which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Verse number nine, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and you could just go on a wonderful passage of scripture but as he comes to say behold the lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the of the world i just put down six quick points you can write down the scriptures we're not going to look to them but i'll read them but six quick points when I behold the Lamb, what do I see? Of course, one that you cannot help but stand out, given to us throughout Scripture. When I behold the Lamb, I see, number one, the sacrifice of Christ. The sacrifice of Christ. That's what the Lamb was for, was for sacrifice. The Lamb was constantly put before Israel as that which is without spot or blemish, to be the sacrifice. Isaiah preaches as a sacrifice. Of course, John, he says, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Here, the praise is given, the Lamb that was slain for our sins. And so, number one, the sacrifice. 1 Peter 2.24 says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Maybe early on in your youth and you went through some experiences and things and, and uh, when you, uh, you uh, uh, see some particular place or some particular uh, item uh, or picture, it just takes you right back to that time in your life. It reminds you of, of that uh, you know, uh, uh, that took place. It might be a painting, but something that brings back that picture. When I think of the Lamb of God, it reminds me of the sacrifice. He is the sacrificial lamb. That died for my sins. Uh, number one, the sacrifice of Christ. When I behold the Lamb, secondly, I see, number two, the humility of God. The humility of God. You almost think, I, I wish 
my God would appear as the lion. Uh, why? Uh, I know my God is not to be messed with. Uh, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's, he's got the uh, all power is in his hands. Doesn't it bother you when you hear somebody curse Jesus Christ? People that deny him or belittle or persecute Christians. Don't you wish sometimes God would just stand up and level the place? Why doesn't he come out as the lion? You know, he came out as the lamb. The humility. The creator of the heavens and the earth. And yet he comes out as a lamb. Philippians 2, the Bible says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a serpent, or I'm sorry, the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. I put that in there as I just think my next point. Uh, you know, uh, uh, even a serpent uh, would be, uh, you know, a little bit more than a lamb. Uh, and uh, if not a lion, then maybe a serpent. But we know the, the devil comes out as a serpent, right? But he also appears as a lion. Uh, you know, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Our adversary as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible says he humbled himself and he became a servant. I've read a lot of things about sheep and and uh, uh, they uh, uh, they're in a sad state. Uh, it's, it's amazing how uh, how uh, uh, helpless uh, sheep are. Uh, and uh, probably why they were, uh, you know, uh, some of the early ones that were taken and domesticated because they have to have somebody taking care of them. Uh, they need a, a shepherd and. And <coughs> <coughs> Jesus Christ, as he came into this world, he came as a lamb. And so with Philippians 2 there, not only do I see a sacrifice, I see the humility of God, but thirdly, the humanity of Christ. The humanity of Christ. We know the Bible says that all we, like sheep, have gone astray. How many references in the Bible what talks about us being sheep? And you know, our creator became a lamb uh, for you and I. The humanity of Christ. John 1, 14, we, we've read it as we've been going through, but it says, uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Not only the sacrifice of Christ, the humility of Christ, the humanity of Christ, but number four, the submission of Christ. The submission of Christ. As he was there on the Mount of Olives and praying, let this cup pass from me, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Isaiah 53, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. What would it be like to be a lamb? Uh, it's kind of like, you know, uh, around here we think of a, a cow. They're raised for a purpose, aren't they? Uh, and... Uh, uh, we know what that purpose is. What if, what if they knew their purpose? Uh, they probably wouldn't be out there enjoying eating their cud so much. And in fact, if, if I was a cow and I knew my purpose, I'd probably starve myself. Because uh, I'd know my purpose. You know, Jesus came into this world. He knew his purpose, didn't he? Uh, even growing up, all the things he was going through, he, he knew the cross was coming. Uh, he knew that's the reason. The Bible says he came to seek and to save that which is lost. Uh, he came to die. That's the purpose that he came for. We think of the lamb. Uh, that lamb, he has no idea uh, that one day he's just lamb chops. Uh, he's just lamb chops. And, but uh, they are a, 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 a submitted creature. Jesus Christ, as he came, he he took him on the lamb. Nobody messes with the lion. But the lamb, 
The lion's the king of beasts. The lamb. But then I look at this and behold the lamb. The fifth thing I believe I see is the power of Christ. The power of Christ. You know, when I when I looked at this and I was thinking about this, I, I'm glad he came as a lamb and not as a lion. It shows the power of Christ. And uh, uh, there was many years ago that in this passage in Revelations, I actually wrote a, a lengthy poem uh, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, uh, when when John turned, what did he see? Uh, and it just kind of goes through the many of the the uh, feats and things of God throughout the Bible. And and uh, but uh, uh, when he turned, what did he expect to see? Not a lamb. First Corinthians one twenty five says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. You know, sometimes man prides himself thinking he's pretty tough. You ever think the devil gets that way? You ever, you ever think the devil, he just kind of says, I, I, I'm tough stuff. Nobody messes with the devil. And uh, I have no problem with telling you the devil's a lot tougher than I am. And I'm not messing with him. But uh, uh, he probably thinks he's pretty tough stuff. And there in, in Genesis, the Bible says there's coming a day that the seed of the woman is going to bruise his head. He's probably looking around. Who do I got to be worried about? I'm the lion. I'm the one everybody fears. But it only took a lamb to take him out. Show you what a wimpy is compared to Jesus Christ. It only took a lamb. The last he expected, I, uh, I really don't believe that. I, I kind of picture the devil is rejoicing as they're marching Christ up to the cross and, and hanging upon that cross. But three days later, I don't believe he was rejoicing anymore. He was defeated by a lamb. Wouldn't that be embarrassing through all eternity? This lion to say, uh, uh, you know, on his belly or on his back, he's going to be eternally chained up in torment. And, and uh, wow, it must have really been quite the creature that destroyed you. Uh, well, actually, it was a lamb. Uh, you were beat by a lamb? Well, the lamb of God. He truly does have more power in his pinky. And the devil does in his thigh. I believe as we look at the lamb, it just demonstrates the power of God. That's all God needs. God just needs the lamb. To defeat sin. To defeat the devil and all of his dominions. To one time, one, one, in one time, rule and then destroy this world. And create a new heavens and the earth, just a lamb. But I believe out of just uh, meditating upon and saying, behold, the lamb. Thinking about these different as you look at the lamb, what does the lamb bring to mind? I believe this stood out of all. And that's number six. The friendship of Christ. The friendship of Christ. I believe Christ is both the lion and the lamb. It just depends on where you stand. The friendship of Christ. Mark chapter 4, if you'd write down, Mark 4, 41. The disciples are out in the ocean and the seas. Now, these are fishermen, so it's not just some, some waves and a rough day, but uh, they, they, they know they're going to perish, and the boat is filling up, and Jesus is asleep there in the boat, and and uh, they they wake him up and say, Master, we perish. <coughs> Jesus stands up and. Oh, you have little faith. Looks around, he says, peace, be still. And all of a sudden it's glass. I've seen those days out in the middle of the ocean where. I mean, it's just as far as you can see, not a wave, not a ripple. It's all just instantly calm and 
the disciples' response in Mark 4.41, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I believe there was times as the disciples were traveling along with Jesus that they kind of tended to forget who he was. Why? Because he was their traveling companion. He was their friend. They kind of forgot the power that he is the creator, the heavens and the earth, that he is God in the flesh. I believe his mother raising him. She really did look at him as her son. It's just my boy. But you know, there's a lot of times she pondered those things in her heart. In fact, they were worried about him. Can you get worried about the creator? They're worried. Maybe he's lost as they headed back when he was 12 years old back to Jerusalem and, and found him in the temple. And, and I believe she was a little upset because uh, she was scared for him. Kind of forget who he is. Why? Because he was raised as her son. He was her baby that she had taken care of. And she came at the wedding feast. And he referred, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. I believe he was reminding her who he is. Uh, who he is. Look at Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation chapter number 20. <coughs> Verse number 11. The Bible says here, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Notice the Bible says. The earth and the heaven fled away. I, I praise the Lord. The Bible says perfect love casteth out fear. Scripture says come boldly unto the throne of grace in the time of need. Jesus says all you that labor and heavy laden come unto me. And I will give you rest. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of spirit, and take my yoke upon you. There's coming a day that there's going to be the dead, small, and great stand before God. The Bible says that there is, he sits upon that throne. It says, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. I don't believe the lost see a lamb. I believe they see a lion. And if they don't see a lion today, they're going to see a lion one day. But as believers, we see a lamb. Jesus even said, he says, I, I call you not even servants. He says, I call you friends. I call you friends. I'm trying to think of illustrations there's many there my memory is just bad but uh, just fragments here and there throughout life but i remember in in yakuska japan when i started going to church there and there was a uh, a, a man that came in and he he uh, got saved uh, after uh, after i've been going there a little bit but uh, he was a lieutenant in the marines lieutenant scott and uh, Came and got saved and baptized. And he was growing. He brought his family. His family was overseas with him. And, and uh, they were coming. And, and uh, just uh, through church and through fellowship and stuff, we became friends. And uh, in fact, on, on Sundays before, uh, before church, we'd go out to a Denny's and have coffee. Only place you could get free refills. And a regular cup of coffee. Most uh, Japanese shops, you get this little tiny... You know, I hold like this, like a, a, a children's uh, tea play set. Gives you a little tiny cup, and it is espresso. It is the strongest, blackest, uh, you know, and, and you order coffee. And you only get one, and it was about $3 a cup if you got one. Because they drink tea, so coffee's an odd thing. But Denny's, uh, you have all the coffee you wanted to drink. and uh, But we'd go and have breakfast and, and coffee together, and we'd just visit. And, 
And uh, I, I wasn't assigned with him or to him. I really didn't see him much except for a church and church activities and these fellowships we get together and, and uh, sometimes go over and visit him as a family, uh, you know, uh, 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 most often out of uniform. And, and, uh, but uh, we were there at that Denny's uh, one day and having breakfast, and, and a couple of Marines came in, and uh, they, uh, they were giving the waitress a hard time. Uh, they were just on the other side of the restaurant. They didn't see us over there. And, and uh, all of a sudden, the, uh, the countenance of my friend, Lieutenant Scott, changed. It's got a hardness to it. And he just stood up, and, and not there was literally fire coming out of his eyes, but you could feel the static in the air. And he walked across the restaurant over to those two Marines. And he said, Ten Hut! Boy, those guys jumped up, just about turned the table over. And they looked and realized that their lieutenant was there. And he said, pay your bill and get back to the base. I want you to report to my office. And, uh, boy, they were out of there. That changed the environment, changed everything. Um, Why, he was their lieutenant. He was my friend. But he was their lieutenant. Uh, But still, even today, thinking of, you know, there's a static in the air. I praise the Lord. To me, he's the lamb. But may I not forget, he's also the lion. John, as he came and he pointed to Jesus Christ, as he walked there to the people, sinners who were repenting and being baptized, and looking for the Savior, and he said, behold, the lamb. Today's the lamb. Anyone who would come to Christ, he would save. But there's coming a day that those who don't come to the lamb will come to the lion. He is the lamb and he's the lion. Behold, the lamb of God. As we go through this year, I praise the Lord. He's he's the lamb. The sacrifice, the humility, the humanity, the power, the friend. Let's stand as we have the invitation. If you're not 100% sure that you're safe, come to the Lamb and be saved. If you are saved, behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. May we go out and be the voice in the wilderness. There were glory in the cross. And our Savior, Jesus Christ, and cry, behold, the Lamb. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for uh, coming as a Lamb. Lord, I know you could have come as the Lion. We certainly deserve it. Uh, Father, that uh, even back with Noah, you could have destroyed it all, but praise the Lord that One found grace in your eyes. Uh, Lord, but there's been many times since. I think in our lives. I thank you, Father, that you came as the lamb. And that we can know you as the lamb. And that we can have a personal relationship and fellowship with you. Because you are the lion. Father, I uh, just want to pray that through this year, uh, we would hold up the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. As we... Go into the highways and hedges. Father, I pray that uh, as we think of your son as a lamb, that we can have that friendship and fellowship and that walk with you. Lord, we'd not take that for granted. We'd not be like the disciples in the boat that forget who you are. Not take for granted that relationship, but Lord, rather enjoy uh, that walk with you. I pray, Father, you'd bless the invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.